So, tariffs, trade and wars. America's biggest trading partners are planning their response to Donald Trump's plans for steel tariffs. Joining me now exclusively is Mexico's economy secretary, Ildefonso Guajardo. He joins me now. Minister, thank you, sir. Um, we, we need to now understand what will... Mexico is one of the largest exporters of steel to the United States. Will you get an exemption from well, the tariffs that the US president is imposing, do you know? Well, it, it may come as a surprise to you, but we are a country that is the second most important buyer of US steel, and we are the first buyer of US aluminum. So, in, in a way, we have a trade deficit with the US of $2 billion. The, the North American steel industry is highly integrated. So anything that will distort that integration will not be good news for North America and definitely will, will make our industries less efficient in terms of competition. So in a way, we are sending a clear message. I was in Washington uh, a couple of days ago and I had a meeting with my colleague, Wilbur Ross, and I explained to him that any measure that will not exclude the North American partners will have tremendous consequence on how we are integrated. What will you do to retaliate? The Europeans have already symbolically chosen Bourbon, Levi's um, and, and similar. Um, what would you do to retaliate if you are caught up in these tariffs? Richard, as you know, uh, what we hear from President Trump was an announcement. Uh, I think that uh, it's not the first time that there is uh, some... Re some, some thinking about measures that are going to be definitely taken. We'll have to wait to see what is going to be the final outcome of this action. Once that uh, is clear in black and white, then we'll, we'll do our planning in terms of how we'll react to that decision. But you would agree that tonight, people are talk ministers, trade executives, the markets, people are talking about the start of a potential trade war. It is, it is clear that when you are taking a measure uh, all over uh, your, your partners around the world, uh, the idea is how to deal with steel excess capacity. We are, most of our countries are members of the Global Forum on Steel Excess Capacity that is being discussed at the OECD. And in that forum, you have to take the right actions to really contain that excess capacity. And you have to target where the problem is. By taking a measure that is hitting everybody, it's like trying to kill ants with a rifle. I mean, you have to be precise on what you want to do. And on that precision, let's take, for example, the, the US president has said again and again he wants to target China and Chinese steel, irrelevant of the fact that not a lot of Chinese steel actually gets imported to the US. But if that's the case, and there's further dumping of Chinese steel elsewhere in the world, that's one way in which this bad situation, sir, becomes much worse. You're well aware of the, uh, of the, um, the way in which it is also interconnected. No, definitely. And one of the uh, elements that uh, we, we share in our discussions in this North American uh, dialogue is that Mexico has prevented two years ago with very specific actions to prevent the Mexican steel market to be inundated right. by excess capacity from Asia. So you have, we have taken measures, specific measures, that have been proven effective. That's why our, our, our pushers in the North American market, right. our trade in the North American market, had increased. The, the visit to Washington of your president, uh, it was already put off once. It's now, uh, by the president's decision, he can see no purpose in having a visit, bearing in mind the rhetoric on the wall and, and similar. Relations at the top level between Mexico and the United States sound as if they are at the worst they have been in decades. Let me, let me explain. There are two tracks of this dialogue. We have been extremely effective in building uh, a, an agenda that includes many different items. Our Foreign Affairs Ministry is in charge of putting all this together. And at the ministerial level, at the cabinet level, 
we have a very open dialogue, a constructive dialogue. Now, it is obvious that uh, before we can plan a presidential visit, all the elements of this agenda had to be in the right place. And we have to be very precise of our objectives once we are ready to arrange any visit. How concerned are you now with NAFTA that we're into the final series of negotiations? Do you see room for an agreement on the, on the modernization or are you going to fail on issues of points of origin, margins, and all, and the sunset clause. Well, let me share with you, Richard, that as we speak, our teams are meeting since last Sunday. This is the seventh round. We're hosting it in Mexico City, and I'll, I'll be waiting on Monday for the visit of uh, Ambassador Lighthizer and Minister Freeland, Christian Freeland from Canada. Already, our teams have been uh, telling us of basically closing at least three to four charters within this seventh round of negotiations. Most of them accumulate into the need to modernize the NAFTA has been in place for the last 22 years. Now, our target for this ministerial is try to engage in the more complex issues like the ones that you were referring to, like uh, a rule of content for the automobile industry, like the sunset clause, like the, all the mechanisms that have to, right. that have to do with uh, arbitrage how you decide in different elements. And those are very complex issues, but I do see that there are possibilities to land this agreement in a way that can be a win-win-win for the three countries. All right, let me push you finally, Minister, if I may. It's a Friday, let's have a, let's have a go at this. Minister, you say you see possibilities, but are you optimistic that the possibilities can come to fruition? And how long are you going to give it? before you finally say, this is a waste of time, let's go home. Well, first of all, I have shared this with you when we were in the middle of two meters of snow in Davos. <laughs> As a negotiator, you never use the word optimistic. You use the word constructively engaged and positive. That's the word I use. And I think that, uh, in, in, relative to your question about time, I think that uh, we have to concentrate on the quality of the agreement, regardless of political calendars, regardless of any, any transition in government. We negotiate on behalf of the Mexican people, of the Mexican right. state, and we have to guarantee that whatever is the end result is good for us. Minister, constructive engagement right the way through. Thank you for constructively engaging with me uh, tonight on Craftsman's Business. We much appreciate it, as always, <laughs> sir. Now, Donald